This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. candy bars, 15 cent hamburg hamburgers, when a dollar went a long way, and so did 24 hours. The 60s and the 70s, dwelling place of the lost generation. We who grew up in this era had no real heroes. Our role models came from the imaginations of others. Our meager lives were formed by and revolved around weekly installments of our favorite TV programs. Welcome to a place that your parents didn't understand. A place that exists somewhere between the forefront of recollectable memory and the edge of everyday thought. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome home. Welcome to the first of what we hope are a lot of uh, exciting shows here on ACTV. Welcome to Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbar, and uh, along with my other hosts, Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. Um, this is going to kind of be an informal show. Uh, it's the kind of show for people who think that 30-something is just a little bit too, uh, uh, it's too old for them. It's for people who were brought up in the 60s and 70s and who were interested in only one thing. Television. 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 Well, on uh, this edition, we're going to be discussing something that's certainly big in the news right now, uh, but not in the way you would expect it. The big Batman movie, of course, is uh, just zapping uh, box office records all over the place. But uh, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the TV show, the fine television show uh, in the 1960s. I thought we'd uh, first uh, go through a real quick... Uh, history of the character just to get you up to date on what's going on with him. Batman, uh, created by uh, Bob Kane, uh, appeared in the uh, uh, number 27 issue of Detective Comics. That was in 1939. Uh, he's also seen in, of course, his own Batman comics and, uh, let's see, All-Star Comics and uh, Justice League of America and Brave and Bold and World's Finest. He was all over the place. He's, you know, pretty much number two over at DC. And um, there's also the big movie serial in the 1940s. And I don't know, do you have any idea who, who did that? Well, actually, there were a couple of serials. There was one in 43 and then one about in 45. And they had different sets of actors for each of them. So um, they were actually two different. OK. I don't remember what they were. Well, we, I, we don't know. We, we don't know. We weren't there. We weren't there. <laughs> so that's not TV. Is, that's <laughs> right. That's right. This is about TV. So. Um, uh, let's see, and then uh, after the series, there was the, uh, if you remember this, the live action, the Batman stuff in the late 70s, it was like that, I think it was like Super Friends or something, but it was live action, and it did have Adam West. Um, what was that? It was... I'm trying to remember. Um, gosh. It was, it was more of a parody than yeah, it even was. the it was, Batman it was, it was, series it was, 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 right. and they it was had a lot to more believe. heroes, and it was... Well, in any case, but no. <laughs> that, that gives you a basic idea. Um, anyways, uh, we just wanted to have a little discussion on exactly uh, the impact of the series and uh, uh, just, uh, just basically discuss the thing. So I'm going to stop rambling and turn it over to Wilbert with his uh, first point for the evening. Okay. One of the um, 
things that I always found interesting about the Batman show was the fact that he had, um, well, he was prepared for just about every occasion yeah. in his bat gear that he had. And the bat gear changed from, well, he had basic bat gear with the utility belt and the batarang. And of course, there were the vehicles, the Batmobile, which you saw more than anything, any of the other vehicles, but there was the bat boat, the bat cycle, the bat copter, and then there's the bat cave, but his, just his, his gear basically that he carried around with him, the utility belt, which held, um, the whole array of bat pills. Everything. Yes, there were only. for every gas ever made. Right. There were only like 10 pockets on there, but yet <laughs> he was, he was prepared for every, every darn situation. Mm. Probably, as the batarang was probably his best known and the most used. Um, oh, that's true. The bat batarang was attached to the bat rope. rope. And so that was probably his um, best known and best used, most used um, set of Right. Well, the one things. disadvantage I've noticed is he always had to attach that bat rope to that batarang before he gave it a throw. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. what was the it deal? Wasn't, it wasn't a whole <laughs> when deal. Have that, it was when you have that together? And actually, the batarang just went up and wound around something so they could climb up the side of a building. Yeah, or just anything. He'd just toss it up there, and it would whip around whatever was yeah. up there, a flagpole, yeah. the... Uh, <laughs> the side of the big umbrella there on the, the penguin sent him one day. Yeah, just anything that was overhanging that they could attach that onto, and then they'd climb that bat rope, which was always interesting, just climbing there. And they always, they never shinnied up the rope. Oh, no, they had their feet on the thing, planted, and they were walking. Which is a really tough way to go up a building, I would think. Yes, it, indeed it is. There were no, there were never any, any knots tied in the bat rope. They were just climbing, and they had on gloves. They had on gloves, <laughs> but they never slid down. It's like their gloves had Velcro. This was before right. Velcro was well known or right. anything, but they're just holding on there, and they're just climbing up there. Well, actually, there were a couple times where Batman uh, did throw the rope up onto a catwalk or whatnot, and he sort of climbed as he sw as the rope swung, and he climbed as he swung. Yeah, that 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 uh, that's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah. Physics was just like, wait, how did he do that? Well, you know, along with everything else, Batman probably could also defy gravity. <laughs> and in 1967, we didn't take physics classes. That's, that's true. That's true. 65, your basic, your basic whenever. Audience. So hey, it was believable that wasn't for us. In my so curriculum, we, so. It was fine. I mean, we watched the show as kids, so it was. It, we didn't catch the campy. I didn't catch the campiness as a five, six-year-old. It was real action. It was real true real hero. Mm -hmm. My parents laughed. I hated them for it, but <laughs> they thought it was hilarious. I didn't see anything funny about it. It was a serious show. It right. was serious stuff. Yeah, the, now the, the characters that were in the comic book as opposed to the ones that were in the series, there were two that, as far as I remember, were never in the comics, which was Chief O'Hara and, um, and Anne Harriet. Which I had a real problem. Of course, I had a real problem with Aunt Harriet to begin with, because it's like there's a whole bunch of things you can ask about about Aunt Harriet. It's like, uh, uh, why didn't she ever notice there's this blinking red phone in the study? What was the deal with that? I she, don't think she was allowed in. She right. never, <laughs> Aunt Harriet never got to go into the study. I thought there was some point she was in the study. Maybe I'm wrong, but in any case, and and why why she never wondered where were Bruce and Dick all the time? Well, they always had good excuses: deep sea fishing, fishing. board meetings. Yeah. They were busy men. They were they were very busy. But they were gone all the time. And it is a big house, so it's like right. she couldn't she couldn't come. May not may be somewhere else in the, in the house. She was usually following Alfred around with a tray or something. Right. Alfred, he was their other cover, so you know I think he could I think he hypnotized Aunt Harriet or something. There you go. They're not here, here. but they're here, <laughs> here, but you don't see, see them. them. <laughs> they're off in the east wing, the west wing. Who knows? Yeah. Now, now, why didn't she miss Alfred when he's down like cleaning the Batcave, which he seemed to be doing a lot. You know, it's like, uh, this, it, she, he appears to be the only servant in this place. She was at her ladies' club meeting. Ah, or I see. Either that or he was always cleaning somewhere, and so it's not like she's going to try to track him down. Yeah. Either. She's just going to go but, and... But, you know, it's like she's probably waiting for him, like, uh, you know, for him to... The other possibility to... was they could have had her just knocked out and drugged most of the time. <laughs> So that she didn't notice that anyone was there of the whole show, not. maybe. Yeah. That was the whole thing. Had a lot of stress yeah, problems. She only noticed things when they were pointed out to her right. anyway. <laughs> she was and a pretty dizzy woman. I, I found out in looking at the, the, the Batman book there that they 
they just threw Aunt Harriet in to uh, kind of offset the idea that, um, well, Bruce and Dick are two guys, you know. <laughs> mm. Well, so let's throw in Aunt Harriet. You got to have a woman in the house, right? To, just not to make it look it like doesn't matter that she doesn't know. Too friendly, you know? right? <laughs> let's see. Um, oh, another question I had. I, I this this bugs me. Who put the line? Who put the phone line in for the bat phone? Now the phone company did not do this because if they did, they know where the bat they cave was. All right. Um, it, did, did Batman personally put this thing in, like some night when nobody was looking? Well, I well, want to know where they got a lot of this stuff. You right. Know? <laughs> well, he, well, a lot of this stuff. Did they I have mean, their Bruce, own Bruce is really plant? rich. I mean, Bruce is probably probably has some. Bruce Wayne's got some manufacturing plants in Brazil or something that are like. So he's got these like Brazilian people stamping out the bat stamp, stuff. Stamping out bat, bat stuff. With little bats <laughs> on it, and they don't know where it's going. <laughs> they don't know. They just figured they were going to sell it to the kids. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, they're making so millions of them. Only one of them's really working, but they they're just making millions of them. There you go. There I think go. I think Bruce, um, in those years between the uh, time when he decided that he was going to fight against crime and when he actually decided what he was going to do in there, he he became like a jack of all trades. He went to different schools. He learned a lot. So he probably put in that phone yeah, line did, himself. He, he did. Uh, <laughs> he probably knew how to do it. Yeah, I mean Bruce knew how to do everything. He did have that is, basic chemistry set there right. in, in that computer, which just uh, did everything. Could it do everything? I mean, it was a programming. Especially in, the, in that era of batch processing, that all that stuff just, bam, you know, really fast. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I want to know. If Bruce Wayne and Commissioner Gordon were such good friends as the commish says they were, right? How come he couldn't tell that the his voice. good the voice? I mean, <laughs> he didn't change the voice. That's one of the most distinctive voices, right? In TV, mm -hmm. radio, anything is the Bruce Wayne Batman voice, right? And it was like I just thought, you know. All these people are stupid, or what? <laughs> yeah, with, with most of your heroes, like change their voice a little bit. Yeah. I mean, but, Superman, but whole, like zoom, the voice went down like an octave every time. Your police department, everybody doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah. No wonder they needed Batman in Gotham because it's obvious the, uh, <laughs> these guys police are not, department these was are not, not rocket scientists. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, the character of Batgirl. Now, was Batgirl really needed? Since yes. since they, do you think so? Yes, us little girls needed well needed somebody. We didn't have anybody at all. This was pre Wonder Woman. This was pre yeah. everything. Uh, yeah, Batgirl was definitely was fun. needed. I was, got to was, dress up for like that for Halloween. So yeah, it was definitely you got needed. The, you, got the, you got the spandex suit with the uh, glitter no, stuff was, on it and all that. No, it was more like a sweatshirt, a pair of tights, a cape, and a cow. Ah, <laughs> okay. Oh, my boots. Yeah, right. My boots. Yeah, because it just you know. I mean, uh, it it uh, it appealed to the the male teenagers, and uh, and then it pretty much appealed to the girls. So that was pretty much your dual thing. Yeah. There. Plus, on the playground, it gave you something. Um, it kind of worked out the um, who was going to be Catwoman, who was going to be Batgirl. I mean, before Batgirl, it was uh, everybody wanted to be Catwoman because Catwoman got close to. Batman, you know, right? And there weren't other, you know, nobody wanted to play Aunt Harriet, you know. Who wants to be <laughs> Aunt Harriet on the playground? You sit around stupid. So it was like, yeah, Batgirl gave you somebody to work this out with. It was like, okay, I'll be Catwoman, you can be Batgirl. I'll be Batgirl, you be Catwoman, and that kind of, that way, you know, groups of kids that had more than one girl in them didn't have to fight anymore. Okay, I, I stand, <laughs> I stand corrected on that. Well. We have any other points? Uh, Besides, you know, it got to set off that Aunt Harriet is so dumb. We needed somebody. A smart, a smart female in the in the show. Yeah. Yes. Besides the criminals, and that brings up the point of well, let's let's look at um Catwoman. There was okay. um, That's about all you guys did was look at Catwoman. <laughs> I'll admit I looked at Catwoman a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially well, since Catwoman did the. Um, they did the amazing thing on there of let's let's change the actresses that play Catwoman, kind of like um, oh they've done this in another series like Bewitched where they changed Darren and they mm -hmm. changed uh, they no ch explanation <laughs> they changed the neighbor they uh -huh. they did that and um, well Doctor Who I thought was the best one because he would just regenerate and he'd <laughs> become somebody new but mm -hmm. here they they never explained really it's like what happened did this one Catwoman decide oh I won't be Catwoman anymore and some other criminal there in prison said well I'll be Catwoman okay, now, now. <laughs> you know, but they they got okay they had Julie Newmar they had yeah. Lee Merriweather and they had Eartha Kitt now of 
I, I, I don't know. I like um, Julie Newmar a whole lot more than the other two for just the... Well, at least with uh, Lee Merriweather, they did try to match hair, basic physical, but I think Julie Newmar kind of had everybody beat back then yeah. <laughs> in the days of Twiggy <laughs> as far as... Uh, physique and form and everything. Eartha Kitt was just the pits. The only thing she could do good was hiss. Yeah, she had the voice. She, she had, had the, the voice. Hiss. Had the voice and no, all, but, but uh, uh, other than that. No. She and was she too did, short and stumpy. She did have the cat car, too. The, the one episode where they had the cat car, where she sprang the Joker from prison. They showed the kitty car, the cat car, whatever it was, and Julie, um, uh, Eartha Kitt did get to drive that, but I don't know. I like Julie Newmar a lot. I just figured Lee Merriweather, it's like she was in a movie. It was a real disappointment for me. I was waiting to see Julie Newmar mm. in a movie, but here's Lee Merriweather in the movie. I figured they just threw her in there because she must have done something before that, you know, right. that she, she was already America famous. And, right. and then she's like, oh, nobody knows who Julie Newmar is. Let's put in Lee Merriweather. <laughs> yeah. she'll, she'll get to be Catwoman for a while. Last second executive and, decisions at the studio. <laughs> Well, even as a little kid, I could definitely tell the difference between Julie Newmar and Lee Merriweather. Julie Newmar could act, for one thing. Right. Wasn't Lee Merriweather, was she like a Miss America or something? Yep. Was this yeah, like one of her prizes? Yeah, that's And you get yeah, to play Catwoman on the Batman next movie. show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. It's like, we haven't seen enough of Lee Merriweather. Let's, let's, let's make her Catwoman. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot of exposure there for her. Yeah. Now, another, um, what I consider, consider it was kind of like a uh, dichotomy here, the the most powerful villain in, I mean, not, not the best villain, but the most powerful villain had to be, in my opinion, Mr. Freeze. Because, you know, all the rest of them were basically just either deranged people or they had some sort of psychotic thing where they had to, you know, like Riddler, I had to give him a riddle. And, you know, <laughs> they had to do different things, but they weren't big on, uh, really big on really powerful gadgets. Hmm. Except, Mr. Freeze could also be your most Freeze, vulnerable because he yes, had to have that suit. Right. So he was, he was the most vulnerable and he was the most, uh, almost unlikely, you know, because it was like, uh, of all the other villains, it's like, uh, they could have, they could be somebody like that. Some, you know, guy goes insane and he puts on the makeup like Joker, but Mr. Okay. Freeze, ooh, some chemicals hit him and he can now only live in 50 below zero. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, pretty darn implausible, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But to get around, he did have to have the suit. And I mean, if Bat, this is this is another thing. Batman, if you want to defeat Mr. Freeze, why didn't you just take his helmet off and let him die? Here. You know, pop there, Mr. Freeze. Mess with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't inhumane. Right. He, he was just fighting well, crime. He also but felt he... a bit guilty because he was responsible, sort of responsible for Mr. Freeze's See, condition. He, felt, he like made him I fall mean, into you know, the. Yeah, he made him fall into the, the stuff he was messing whatever, with. Whatever. Yeah. The, the chemical, the Insta Freeze. The Insta Freeze. The there Insta -freeze. you go. Whatever. <laughs> Insta Freeze Days before was. Freon, right. we had Insta Freeze. That's right. <laughs> okay, whatever the stuff was. So I guess that's why Batman just didn't go over there and pop that helmet off right. and say, die, sucker. <laughs> yeah, and this, and this, well, the same thing. Um, well, that's so, you know, something that I couldn't understand was the obvious thing was to defeat these people and lock them up. How did they keep getting out? Why right. did they keep getting out? I know, I know Penguin got a parole there. Really? I mean, we're talking really lenient judges here. Really? Well, you, you, you just about killed everybody in Gotham City. It wasn't those you were gonna days like, when they did have capital punishment. Yeah. You could have fried these guys. Yeah, but <laughs> no. Well, we'll put you a year. There yeah. we go. Or like, uh, it, or it seemed more like not a year, more like, like two or three months, because like two or three months, they're back for another episode. Well, yeah, a couple uh, episodes yeah. at least. Beginning yeah. of shock probation right. or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. In and out. There you go. And did they did they go into a special prison too? Because I'm sure that you're going to get put these people in these costumes in prison, or did they have to wear the regular? Well, there's there's a good question. Stripes, because in, you know? in the comic book, they had a thing called Arkham Asylum, mm. and they also had that was for the insane ones, and then it was like like a super villain prison. You know, all the various super villains were put in this one prison. Okay. <laughs> you know, which I thought, well, that's a pretty darn dangerous thing to do. But yeah, they were like yeah. special, special design for every cage that was like specially designed to to stop the person get out. You okay. know? Well, of course, on TV show, we never actually knew where they went. They just went off up to prison, prison, up the up river, the river, up the river, up the river. Yes, yeah, so they just, you know, we didn't really I, I know what did happened. It just, the it just Gotham was funny to me that they got one out. time or another. You know. But the only time you got to see it was when somebody was coming out. You never got right. to see them in there, or rarely did you get Rare. to see them in there, because you did get to see some of them. Yeah, but in all, there. all these villains all in one place. 
Yeah, that just... Well, they put them like on opposite sides, you know, like, put the Joker over here and the Riddler way over on the other side of the prison so yeah, they no. don't meet each other. Or they can't meet in the exercise yard or, yard, or, anything, yeah. <laughs> or the library or <laughs> at dinner, you know, in the, the mess hall. Whatever. The guard's like sitting around going, hey, wait a minute, look at that penguins over there with uh, Catwoman. We better, uh, <laughs> better, better break, break them break up over there. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, they're probably plotting to get out of here, you know, whack, do something. Whack, so. where, did they get all the, where did they get all their goons? Good was question. there a Renegoon place? Did guys stand down, <laughs> the, was, down on the corner and was. like drove up? Hey, you, yeah, you, you, Goth I think you, in you, Gotham you City, I'm sure work. some guy ran something called Renegoon, where they just like they have we, you know, it's like a temp service where you just like, yeah, you know, <laughs> mur, mur, okay, we need you five, go over, you know, meet them at uh, the abandoned warehouse and uh, on the water be there. Front, yeah, on yeah. the waterfront. Okay, qualifications, got to be able to fight. Well, not very well. Not well, no. Just got to be able to fight. And why the heck uh, didn't Gotham City just go and knock down all those abandoned warehouses? Because that always was where the bad guys were like hide out. Abandoned well, warehouses, just, just, places just tear them all down. Floor. Why didn't Bruce buy buy all that land and then tear the whole thing down and put up a parking lot? Put up a, par a parking lot. There you go. Some place to keep his back. <laughs> 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 Built a museum to himself. <laughs> the Batman Museum. The Great Bruce Wayne Museum. <laughs> and, and something I wanted to know now. Robin was a teenager, right? Right. When did he go to school? Good question. Well, did he just have he, private tutors? He was because probably, they were he's probably so rich. So, yeah, so rich that he had private tutors. He, he never they had didn't to seem open to a care book. when he was there. Right. He just. <laughs> And he it's knew like, a lot. He knew uh, a lot for a guy. Well, yeah. I really can't uh, do the tutoring today. I got to, um, um, or uh, I've got to go to uh, Europe. Go yeah, fishing. Go, Europe. go fishing with go Bruce. Fishing. All right, Bruce and I are going. I Ooh. always thought that Bruce kind of handled his. Bruce and Alfred kind of handled his, handled his tutoring, although they never really mentioned that. I just kind of thought that they did. I can see Alfred doing that. Yeah, no question. Well, the super butler here. Yeah. <laughs> Not only can he disguise himself as Batman and pass himself well, off in <laughs> certain circumstances, and <laughs> he can keep the Batcave clean. He can tutor young Master Dick there, and and just, gee, Man, who well, would need a mom? Well, <laughs> well, speaking speaking of disguises, what the, was the deal with? Almost every time you saw a villain, when they were in their lair or whatever, you know, they'd just be wearing their normal outfit. But when they went on a on a crime spree, they'd wear their normal outfit. And this little dinky mask. Yeah, like we'd never know who that who was. Who is it? Oh, oh no! Oh no! He, who could that person be? On, but it can't be them. He's got this little mask. <laughs> he's got, I'm so not I can't. Sure. Who could it be? Oh, oh. It's just short knee waddles. It, it, oh, oh, how many, many, could it be? Oh, it could be anybody. Oh, 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 look! He's wearing these green clothes with question marks on them. Oh, he's got on that that <laughs> lavender mask. Yeah, it's just. Oh, oh, who could it be? And that Yes, a real demonic. Oh, who could it be? Yeah. Who could it be? Yeah, it just. Makes no sense. Yeah, totally amazing. To, um, another thing, going back to how they had three Catwomans, they had two, two Riddlers. Riddlers. Yep. The John Aston and... Er, and, the, and, and, the, and the totally superior Frank Gorshin. Yeah, Frank Gorshin. Frank Gorshin. Was much better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was just... I couldn't understand. I mean, he didn't shave his mustache well, or anything. I mean, my first impression when I was a little kid was Gomez is on the show. Right. What is Gomez doing where's on Morticia? here? Yeah, where's Morticia? Where's, where's Lurch? <laughs> Uh, Gomez did he, did is he on the show. Did he forget that he's Gomez? <laughs> he's a, an amnesia thing. Yeah, he's is now it, the Riddler. Is he, is he, well, Gomez was real rich, too. Maybe he just decided to play for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like going on neato adventures anyway. Yeah, yeah I was. Now, now, wasn't, weren't there two Mr. Freezes? Yes, there were. There's there were, George there were. Sanders. And, and you have your bat book. I could look it up. <laughs> Mr. Freeze, Mr. We're Freeze. We're going to look it up in our, one of our, by the way, if you're, um, if you're still with us, I don't know. If you're hard, oh well. But if you're still with us, uh, we uh, uh, we'd uh, welcome any questions about uh, uh, 60s and 70s television in general. Um, if you're, uh, we're not uh, trying to say we're the ultimate experts in it. We got a lot of reference material, and uh, we'll certainly try to find out anything we can possibly find out. So, write to where are we gonna have them write to. Um, we well, haven't figured that out yet. I guess it's they a very can. prototypical just show the here. The station. The station. ACTV. What's yeah, our three right. three ninety four okay. Oak Street? Yes, care right. of the vast wasteland. Well, care the vast wasteland care of ACTV. Right. Now, we sure we're sure their ACTV is going to be bummed now because it's going to be like torrents of letters are going to be pouring in. But yeah, they'll have to hire extra staff. Yeah. Probably. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Otto Preminger was That's the second Otto Mr. Preminger. Freeze. Okay. There you go. The ball headed Mr. Freeze, Freeze, as you can see here, and George Sanders was the first Mr. Freeze. 
He was, was he was not one of the best actors, but I thought he did a fairly good accent, job. How that accent, buddy? Yeah. Well, he was. I think he was more of a Shakespearean actor. That's yeah. Probably, well, I think of that's, course, that was the deal. You can almost say that about anybody. That right. They, they're, they're getting into TV. Well, weren't they a Shakespearean the actor actors. first? Yes. yes, they did that Playhouse. They were Shakespearean actors, in Canada, right. <laughs> or in England. Yeah, well, that's where all Shakespearean actors come from. Well, let's see. Uh, do I have anything else here? Uh, mm, I really well. Uh, one thing I noticed about the whole the whole series was that um, a lot of people wonder whether the comic book inspired the campiness of the show or vice versa. And from what I've seen, they kind of cross pollinated each other because because the comic book was kind of campy before that. But once you see the the stuff at with there was the comic books that were running out during the show were like really campy. <laughs> But like worse than the show, which is hard to believe, but I was kind of thinking that the campiness came from an idea that they might have been doing a parody of the serials. And yeah, when you when they, you parody something that's that's older, you look at how how it well, just time itself makes things like that um, mm -hmm. antiquated. And so they looked at that and said, Whoa, look at the things that we're doing then. Let's do a series and let's let's just kind of poke fun at the idea you know? yeah well see. do you have any other any other points uh, I think we're I think we're zipping toward the end of the show at a tremendous well, rate I was I was looking I was just thinking about the movie was was the movie um, the the Batman movie not not, not the new movie not the new one we're looking the, at the, the movie that came movie. off of the series right. here was it fun or was it a flop <laughs> hmm well I think I think they went overboard with well, we have to show everything we have to show the Batmobile. We have to show the Bat Cycle. We have to show the Bat Copter. We have to show the Bat Boat. We have to show everything. And they spent too much time on that. Oh, but the shark on Batman's leg was great. <laughs> oh, he it had was the so Bat realistic. Shark repellent right there. Like no, no Robin had to happen. lower it. Yeah, that's true. But they did have it but with them. But they did have it with all, which in, in most helicopters, you're going to have like, you know, like uh, various fish repellents in it in case your helicopter is attacked by a fish. But of course, I hadn't thought of that. Right. <laughs> you never know. That's true. But hey, Batman always knew. <laughs> That's why he did. He was always Batman, the ultimate Boy Scout. I'm always prepared. I'll always have something for whichever situation. I wanted to real quick before we get out of here. I wanted to show this, if we can. Ah, oh, here we go. This was the. Uh, this is this is not an original, by the way. If it was, I'd have it in a vault somewhere. This is the first issue of Batman, which is worth something like twenty thousand dollars now. Some enormous amount of money. So that's Batman then, and and here's Batman about now. If you can even see that, it's uh, that's not one of the most graphic covers, but uh, that's an annual from this year. Just to give you an idea how Batman has uh, gone from here to there. But um, he's not smiling anymore. He doesn't smile. <laughs> he does, the man does not smile now. He's not a he's happy a, guy he's anymore. Not a, <laughs> he's pretty vigilante wise. But anyways, well. I'm giving, being given that signal to get out of here. So, uh, for uh, Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, we hope you enjoyed this fine show today. Next time, what are we going to do next time? We don't know. Who knows what we'll Who do? Knows Who we'll knows go. if there's even going to be a next right. time? Right. <laughs> we'll never do another show. But we'll go get a pizza and talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. After the show, we'll go talk about the next show. So, uh, we'll be delving again into the wonderful world of 60s and 70s television. So, for all of us here at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you later.